Videos like these are made possible by viewers like you, who support the channel through Patreon, channel memberships, and stream donations. And don't forget to check out the Bad Weapon Rehabilitation servers at www.badweaponrehab.tf. Check the links in the description for more information, and let's get into the video. Definitions are impotent. It's how we even know what we're talking about half the time, and how we know we're not just using terminology that we don't know the meaning of incredulously. Ah! But what happens when there's a term that's used constantly, where no one can seem to agree on a proper definition for it? Well, that's when you get the very loose role of a subclass in TF2. This is a term that's been around for a while, and while it's generally understood what it means, the conditions that are required to become a subclass are so loose and vague that either almost anything could be a subclass, or almost nothing could be. So what the hell even is a subclass? The TF2 wiki defines a subclass as a specific set of weapons that drastically changes the way the class is played. However, this discounts a lot of what people consider to be subclasses, so what I've come up with is this. A subclass is a means of playing a class that is significantly different from its intended base playstyle. This is a definition that I think most people would call agreeable. The word significantly certainly came up a lot in a poll I ran a while back, talking about what makes a subclass. But there's already a few issues in here with both definitions that we'll get into in a moment. Some of the most commonly agreed upon subclasses are the Demo Knight, the Battle Engineer, and the Trollger. There's loads more, but let's use these as examples to get our footing. Demo Knight is obviously very significantly different from the base Demo Man. Your defining explosives are gone, and you change class roles entirely from a frontline's high DPS, mid-range damage dealer, to a tanky, melee-based pick class. Then of course the Engineer usually hangs back and has an entirely defensive role, but with the Gunslinger and a Shotgun, suddenly you become a lot more aggressive while still maintaining the supportive elements of your class. And Trollger trades your rocket launcher's damage in exchange for making it a pure mobility tool with the rocket jumper to focus on getting picks with your market gardener. Where things get weirder and more vague is with some of the other subclasses that people will often say are valid, and this is where everything starts to make a lot less sense in terms of having a solid definition. So let's look at a few examples. Fat Scout is one of the most common unconventional subclasses because it involves you intentionally ignoring your primary means of dealing damage in exchange for focusing on your shotgun and sometimes your melee, especially with something like the KGB. Now this is already a step in a weird direction because even though the shotgun and KGB are weapons that most heavies aren't going to be using in their minigun focused loadouts, the entire point of this subclass is to outright ignore your most effective means of dealing damage. You aren't replacing it with anything else, there's nothing to make your shotgun play more effective, you're just choosing not to use your minigun. This is also the case for other subclasses like the Battle Medic or the Gun Spy, who choose to ignore their class's main functionalities in exchange for dealing damage with what pretty much amounts to a secondary weapon. Even Pyro Shark could arguably fall into this category, since he mostly deals damage with the Neon Annihilator and his gameplay is certainly much different from a normal Pyro's. Now this is still a dramatically different playstyle based on your weapons of choice, so a case could absolutely be made that this is a valid subclass, but let's keep going. Pybro is another potential subclass that people often claim as such, primarily centered around the homewrecker. But I made a video talking about why that's maybe not so much the thing it's best for, and why it's not necessary to use the homewrecker in order to be a pie bro. Regardless, this is a playstyle focused around being defensive more than anything else, in particular defending your engineers from threats like spies and explosives. But the thing is, outside of the homewrecker destroying sappers, it's trivial to accomplish most of these things without changing your weapons at all. The only thing it requires changing is your mindset, and even then, that might be your default mindset going into Pyro. In his How It Feels to Play Pyro video, Lazy Purple's playstyle revolving around protecting his teammates, countering spies, and focusing on air blast sounds an awful lot like a Pyro to me, and that's just how he plays the class at base. The base Pyro and the Pybro subclass are indistinguishable in this scenario, so does it really count as a subclass? It's all in your head, man. In the same life, you can switch between what effectively amounts to subclasses at will 
by just thinking about it hard enough. Which might fit into the second definition that I gave, sure, but certainly not the one that the wiki gives. How about one more? Huntsman Sniper. Yeah, just Sniper, but with the Huntsman. You change one weapon and now that's a subclass. This one was really popular in the comments of the poll I posted. Now granted, the Huntsman is different from the Sniper Rifle in terms of its functionality. It's a projectile instead of hitscan. But is this really so different that it warrants simply using a single different weapon as being a new subclass? I mean, you're still throwing shot after shot out into the void trying to hit enemy gamers in the head. Now it's just, you know, more luck based. This is a surprisingly common subclass scenario. I've heard this used for the Dragon's Fury and even the Shortstop because they change how you play the class in significant ways, but are they significant enough to define the role as a subclass? So now you might be able to see where some of the problems in those definitions lie, and why it's so hard to define what a subclass is, because some of the most commonly accepted subclasses are minor things like a single weapon, ignoring your own kit, or a simple change in mindset. At that point, Shouldn't anything be considered a subclass? Is Backscatter Scout not its own subclass? And wouldn't then the addition of two more non-stock weapons give that specific loadout its own subclass? That would mean there's nearly 2,500 potential subclasses in the game if we're going by loadouts alone. And that's just ridiculous to keep track of. It would also mean that plenty of loadouts that no one really considers to be subclasses, like Conchbox Soldier, would suddenly be their own subclasses, which I think is an idea that some people are going to be a lot more resistant to. Now there are some people who are very firm on their standards, including the TF2 wiki, who say that there is only one thing in the game that can truly be counted as a subclass, and that is Demo Knight. It's a series of weapons designed from the ground up to support a very specific, completely different playstyle. And I can see where this group is coming from. You have a completely non-damaging primary that's used to maintain your health and give you added mobility, a secondary that deals damage but only upon making direct contact with the enemy at high velocity which also has passive functions, and all of this is centered around dealing the bulk of damage with your melee weapon which you'll be using to get picks with thanks to guaranteed critical hits. It's you! Oh, sorry, how did this Demo Knight footage get in the way of this Trollger commentary? Yeah, this is kind of the problem that I have with the Demo Knight is the only subclass camp of people. There are loadouts, like Trollger, that completely change the entire core of your class, and it's not something exclusive to Demo Knight. The idea that Demo Knight is the only subclass also calls into question what the hell is the deal with Hybrid Knight? What is that, a sub-subclass? Is Hybrid Knight not a drastic enough change from the base to be considered a subclass? If so, what is the line between full Demo Knight being a drastic change, but Trollger or Hybrid Knight not being so? Without a clear definition for what defines a drastic or significant change, we're stuck in an eternal limbo where no one has any idea what anything is. In Vertebrate Taxonomy, you basically have two camps of people. There's the people who rigidly hold on to exactly what defines each group of animals. Birds are birds, reptiles are reptiles, fish are fish, and mammals are mammals. And their clearly defined traits make up the entire field of taxonomy. And then there's the second group of people. If it's a tetrapod, it's a fish. Now it's easy to scoff at the second group of people. It would be ridiculous to look at something like an elephant and claim it's a fish. But those people have a point. The lobe-finned fish that all land vertebrates evolve from are more closely related to their land-dwelling descendants than they are to other kinds of fish. So where does the distinction lie? Get! Get back in the water! I am NOT paying taxes! Go on, get! This is basically the situation we find ourselves in when trying to define what exactly a subclass is. Just a bunch of dorks in lab coats trying to figure out if we're fish or not. This brings us to a similar problem that taxonomists have. If the definitions are rigid, then how do we explain the exceptions and the weird overlaps? And if everything is a fish, or if every possible loadout is a subclass, then what's the point in defining anything? If alligators are more closely related to birds than they are to tortoises and lizards, then what are birds doing in their own special camp when they should probably just be reptiles? Or are alligators birds? Does any of this matter if they're all just fish? If you ever see a group of plant taxonomists in a room, don't ask what a tree is unless you want it to turn to a bloodbath. Now some people will try to find a middle ground here, saying that only select things should be subclasses, like Battle Angie. 
That's pretty clearly a subclass, right? You have to change your weapons to be a battle engineer, not just your mindset like with Pyro. Except, if you just started playing the game today, and you wanted to play engineer on any offensive game mode, you know what you did? You played Battle Engi. You had your sentry, you had your shotgun, you had your pistol, it's the same thing, just a lot slower. This is the base of the class on these game modes, and has been since 2007. Realistically, you can use damn near any wrench and shotgun combination, and still be an effective battle engine. As long as you leave the Pompson in the dumpster where it belongs, and play in a sufficiently aggressive manner. Battle engine with the Jag and Frontier Justice can be just as effective, if not more so, than battle engine with the Gunslinger and Widowmaker. And the same goes for the stock wrench and the stock shotgun. Exactly like it does with Pybro, it just comes down to your mindset. So if you thought that Battle NG should count as a subclass, but not Pybro, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you because a fish just crawled out onto land and got your research paper all soggy. I thought I told you to scram! Now we find ourselves back at square one. Should everything be a subclass, or should nothing but Demo Knight? If everything is a subclass, then the term loses all meaning. But Demo Knight can't be the only subclass either, because there are obvious exceptions like Trollger. And besides, if all you need to do in order to dramatically change a class is remove their primary means of damage and change how they deal damage, then Base Jumper Caber Demo with the Sticky Jumper is absolutely a subclass. Who said anything about viability, after all? Now I find it difficult to categorize this sort of thing personally. After all, if you take both of the definitions into account, then something like an engineer running the Southern Hospitality and playing normally wouldn't be considered a subclass. But if the self-imposed challenge subclasses of Gunspy and Fat Scout are to be considered, then a Southern Hospitality engineer running around trying to get bleed kills is absolutely a subclass. Engineer using the Eureka effect to hold down a defensive point? Not a subclass. Engineer using the Eureka effect to spawn camp the enemy team with a sneaky teleporter? Subclass. So instead of making a defining line on what is or isn't a subclass, I say we categorize each subclass into their own group, the way taxonomists categorize weird looking fish as birds or frogs or whatever. The major groups I would create are overhauls, mindsets, challenges, and weapons. Overhauls completely change the class from the ground up, and these would be your Demo Knights and your Trollgers and anything else like that. Mindsets do not require a loadout switch, but may benefit from one, such as the case with the Pybro and the Battle Engie, so they're more closely related to the weapon family tree. Challenges involve ignoring a certain part of your class, which can function very similarly to an overhaul, as is the case with Fat Scout, Gunspy, and Battle Medic, but they're also dependent on your mindset, as you're the one making the choice to play this way, so it's a bit of an offshoot of that branch, but even the Overhaul family isn't exempt from the mindset tree. After all, equipping the weapons that turn you into a subclass to begin with is already something of a self-imposed challenge, considering they're generally less effective than their base counterparts. It's very hard to say that even the Islander is more effective than something like the Sticky Bomb Launcher. And weapons are for those weird ones where it's literally just using a single weapon or any given loadout like the Huntsman or the Dragon's Fury. This is the fungus of this taxonomic tree. There's weird slime molds in this one. I think they're learning how to count, and that frightens me. So now you know what a subclass is. A subclass is everything. And that means nothing! I hope that's a satisfying answer to a question that no one really cared about.